And welcome to the campus of the University of Louisville and Ulmer Stadium for ACC softball today. Number 25, Clemson in town to finish the series against the Louisville Cardinals. Hello, everyone. Glad to have you along. I'm Don Russell with Suzanne Bush. And Suzanne, the series already captured by Clemson. They've extended their winning streak to 16. But in the final game of this series, we're going back to part two of a fabulous pitching matchup we had on Friday night. I am so excited to watch this pitcher's duel again today between Valerie Cagle and Taylor Roby for the cards. Both were absolutely out. Standing Friday night, Valerie Cagle going the distance, pitching 176 pitches Friday night to get the win for the Tigers. Now, Taylor Roby, she has been absolutely exceptional as well. She has pitched 14 innings so far in two games and has only given up seven hits total. And you see she is getting it done on both sides of the ball. And when you talk about the Clemson starting lineup, she faced it on Friday night, and it's a team that can really hit the softball. Yeah, so, you know, one through four, they're always dangerous, but every single person in their lineup has registered at least one hit so far in this series. And you know what happens then? Everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a great game today, and we're glad you're along. Going back to that matchup on Friday night, Roby, we forgot, not really, but you think she did pitch so well. Of course, she faced one batter in the eighth inning. So she didn't get the loss at all and then gave up, as Suzanne just mentioned, just those few hits. So they were dominant. We'll see what happens here today. And Clark, who started things off the day with a big wave. Then. <laughs> nice big shot there to get the game. Two of the series started yesterday. And actually, Clark is second in the ACC with triples. She does have four triples and has a lot of speed on the base path. And that's what you can get from Clark. You know, not often do you see your leadoff hitter that can hit a home run, but she can do that. Yeah, so but. she's got the speed and the, the short game, but she also can clearly hit the long ball. Won't be many slaps out of her. Won't be a slapper, that's for sure. Let's pitch on the outside corner for a strike. And it's quickly no balls and two strikes. Beautiful Sunday afternoon single game. As ACC play in for pretty much the rest of the season except an occasional single non-conference game. And that'll be of course culminating back here in Louisville starting May 6th with the ACC tournament in town right after Derby week. An exciting time. Yes, it is. That'll add to the excitement. Actually going to have a derby yep. with fans this How year. How about that? This one all the way back to the fence. And it will be at least a double, and it's going to be a triple. And just like we talked about <laughs> a few minutes ago, Clark just hit her fifth triple, which now she is the leader in the ACC. And Jordan Wolf didn't get a very good jump on it. The reason for that, though, that ball was hit really hard. Yeah, that was a rope for sure. Again, Mackenzie Clark has such power, but also has fantastic speed. She has the green light all day long to keep running. That's why she's able to make it all the way to third base. Here's a swing and a foul as Matamore comes to the plate. Grace moving up a little bit in the lineup. Well, again, that just shows what we just said. Your lead up, lead off batter once again on, but how about a triple? <laughs> yeah, she's a fantastic table setter for a very potent offensive minded team. Yep. Let's set the defense for the Cardinals. Of course, it was already tested. What do you think there, Suzanne? They, both teams have played pretty good defense throughout the series. Agreed. You know, both teams have really been defending well. Big change in the lineup. We see Becca Chung back behind the plate. 
She didn't make it even through the first inning on Friday defensively, and we have not seen her defensively since Friday, but she is back behind the dish, and she's an exceptional catcher, so I know she gives uh, pitcher Taylor Roby a lot of confidence when she's in the circle. Yes, she does. They go back a long way, and it is that confidence. There's a good pitch inside that's chopped foul, and Roby ahead in the count, one ball, two strikes. Metamore batting 270, a 404 on base percentage. And as my partner mentioned, you go up and down that lineup. That's why you have a happy team. Everybody's had at least one hit that's played in the games. Here's a slow roller. They're going to look the runner back at third and just barely got back there. The runner will be safe at first on a fielder's choice. But had it been maybe anybody other than Clark, they might have been caught off that bag. Well, and, and I like the play by Jenna Servi. She looked twice over at Clark. Clark got a huge jump off the third base uh, bag. You know, I like her looking her back. Save that run. Now you got two runners on, however, so dangerous position with some serious speed from this Tigers team. And while we have the chance, let's take a look at Suzanne's plans for today. Yeah, we've got, you know, they're going to continue. They need to continue riding the offensive wave. They have a total of 25 hits so far. This series, every one of their starters has had at least one hit on the weekend so far. And then effective pitching, you know, has Kegel recovered from her Friday's 176 pitch game? I guess we'll find out. Yes, we will. And you saw John Rittman come out to have a little word with the umpire at third base. Only thing that I could think of there is maybe if he felt his player was, as we talk about John, there's his statistics and bio, was maybe she got pushed off the bag a bit. But this guy has done it all. So much that you don't see there from USA Women's Softball. She, he's still a part of that operation in terms of picking coaches and players. But he started the program last year and they have rocketed inside the top 25 and on a 16 game winning streak it's duke and clemson right now at yep. least partner long way to go yeah duke actually has a 17 game winning streak and so again if both clemson and duke win out today they actually pair up next week for a four game series so i'm very excited to see how that plays out and somebody's streak will come to an end for sure yes Swing and a foul out of play. A little bit behind is Cagle. And again, you lose the sight. She's so, she's not very emotional. She's very intense. But she just casually, oh, well, I'm probably the top hitter too, or one of the top two or three hitters. And she knows she's helping her own cause. And she delivers one here. And a second run on the way to the plate. Need I say more? Wow. Tack on two RBIs to her resume for this weekend. And a two-run lead before she even touches a softball. That is monumental. She sees the ball so well. Doesn't even swing all the way through hard, but just meets it at the perfect time, able to get that ball up the center of the field. Able to advance to second on a wild throw. Yep. So now you still have a runner in scoring position down at second, and Cagle, unbelievable. 16-0, and 0 and you're scoring first, Clemson. Well, and you know what else? You get one run is about normally all you need when that young lady's in the circle. That's probably enough. Great start here in the top of the first. And as if it doesn't get any easier, how about this all ACC preseason standout? Yeah, Marissa Gambarda actually is, her batting average is under 400 for the first time oh all weekend. Oh my goodness. Better because take some of the BP. Efforts, <laughs> yeah, because of the efforts from Roby yeah. specifically. But yeah, she had a uh, two home, two run home run in the top of the 11 to get runs three and four. She is tied for, with 23 RBIs this season. And she is indeed an impact player. 
in a big time way. She takes this one right down the heart of the plate after being ahead 3-0. and Yeah, she was tied. She, she did have the outright lead with 23, but Jamie Bailey from Virginia Tech has come and tied her after yesterday's games. Slow roller toward third. The play will be to first. And the Cardinals get an out in the inning. No advancement from second base on the play. But wow. You know, that's what shows you, too, with the top of the order and how ready this team was when they came to the plate for the first time. And they know they get a run early, one or two. They're normally going to win when you've got Kegel in the circle. Well, and again, this is their third time facing Taylor Roby. Right. So they weren't able to make the necessary adjustments when they faced her again yesterday. But it looks like Coach has had some discussions with them about Taylor Roby's tendencies. They've looked at some tape. They've really do dove into how Taylor Roby pitches. And maybe, you know, here's some adjustments that we need to make offensively when facing Taylor Roby. No doubt about it. Then you see the aforementioned Kegel moving over the third on the play. On the ground out now, there's two away. Two runs in and a runner at third here in the top half of the first inning of game four in this series. Swing and a miss as Perea. She's batting 357 on the season. Another left-handed batter standing in. Just a little bit outside. Philip Friels back behind the plate. He was there on Friday. Jim Cooper at first and second and Dave Wright Necker, our third base umpire. There's a swing and a foul back. You know, this team doesn't take a lot of pitches. If they see something in their zone, they'll get after it. You need to get this third run in if you're a Cardinal fan and make it a 2 nothing deficit instead of a 3-0 uphill battle, most likely. But again, this is just the top of the first inning. But this just makes what is already a pretty difficult task a little bit harder. It'll be the first time. There's a check swing, and that'll be the third out of the inning. But what a start as Clemson gets a couple of runs as we go to the bottom of the first. Well, the Cardinals already down a pair before they come to the plate here in the bottom half of the first inning. Well, Don, we we talked a little bit about Valerie Cagle. She comes in with an ERA. Wait for it, Don. 1.00 in 76 and two thirds innings of work. She has 77 strikeouts on the season. I mean, just incredible, <laughs> incredible stats. She, you know, it's crazy, Don. Though she is, in fact, second in the ACC in ERA with a 1.0 behind Duke's Shelby Walters, who is just insane at a .56. Well, ERA. how would that matchup be, you think, coming Ooh. up next weekend? Right. As my partner mentioned, it'll be Clemson at home taking on Duke. And let's take a look at the Cardinal lineup that, as we have mentioned, it's always tough when you're facing this right-hander, but some Cardinals have been able to get some hits off of her. Yeah, you know, the Greenwood sisters have literally put this, the majority of this offense on their back. Yeah. Roby has some had some great success as well. So it's been a pair of Greenwoods and a Roby, I think you mentioned That's the other night yeah. offensively for this Cardinals defense, or offense, pardon me. Who else is going to step up to the plate and get it done? Well, look at those numbers. That backs up, partner, what you just mentioned. And somebody has need to do it, and they certainly have. Looks at one that just got the outside corner. Well, if you didn't know, as you look at the particulars on Greenwood there. Yes, yeah, she, she's batting 500 in this series. Not to mention she's three for four in stolen bases. So she's effective once she's on a bag. And she is now 
<laughs> How about that? Right on cue. Yeah, she did. Perfectly timed. And that went in the circle. And you see it got a knee in the process. And that ball. It was hit hard. It was hit really hard. And that's got to sting a bit. It was quickly picked up on the deflection. Here it is. Watch what happens. I mean, you see the quick delivery. Poof, right off I her mean, knee. I mean, in that hot corner, Don, I can't tell you how fast that ball is coming at you. And you are, you know, a third of the way in from the bag already. You are so close at that hot corner at third base side. I mean, that is... It's, it's tough and to well, take it off the kneecap. And that's a big play, too, because we talked about this being the best two defensive teams, fielding teams in the league. And, you know, you don't like to make changes in your starting infield, especially at that third base spot. You know, when we just saw that replay, too, good running by Louisville and just a slight hesitation as Cable, Cable tried to pick it up and still, though, able to beat the throw. Let's probably see how she feels for a minute or two and maybe throw a couple, and that's exactly what she's going to do. Just to see if she's going to be able to yeah. put that pressure on that left leg. I would bet you're probably going to have to pull. She looks like she said, I'm good. I read her lips. <laughs> she is good and ready to get back at the hot corner, as you said. She's tough. Yep. But Louisville gets a base runner. Down two runs, so Cassidy Greenwood. So a Greenwood at first and a Greenwood at the plate. Sister-sister duo. Absolutely. I know this Louisville lineup would want nothing more than to get some good, solid hits strung together. I know I have said that all weekend long, but the only two runs they have been able to score this weekend have been from solo home runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's one of the things when you talk about a team that faces somebody like Cagle, you know, you've got to have the bats, and it's, like you said, it wasn't spread out enough. Only a couple of players had the hot bat, and they were not in the run-producing position. And going back about that contest, not only was it an 11-inning game and 176 pitches, that was a career high in strikeouts. As Suzanne mentioned, there were 14. Bunning through that one for a strike. That evens the count at two and two. Her innings pitch was a career high. Of course, she's a freshman for the second year. Batters faced, 44, career high. And, of course, the 176 pitches, career high as well. I guess you could call that almost a record page night. <laughs> <laughs> well, she tacks on another one. Yep, she sure does. So we mentioned, highly recruited, but played outside. She was homeschooled and has been... The mainstay of this Tiger pitching staff as the Tigers are 25th in the country and now 19 and 2. And right atop, as Suzanne said with Duke, that series next weekend will be monumental. Well hit but foul by Roby. Of course, you don't take anything away from Taylor because you know when the Cardinals need a win, she's going to get the softball, let's be honest. Yeah. And what she has in her hand right now, that Louisville Slugger aluminum bat, pretty important too. Yeah, you see her stats there, her on-base percentage, plus her slugging percentage is pretty ridiculous. Yep. Good eye at the plate too. Tried to get her to go after a pitch not to her liking, and now it's a ball, two strikes. You see the stats on Roby this weekend. Mm, Batting yep. 222 with two singles. She gets it up the middle, and the Cardinals have the first two on. I think that may be the first time against 
Kegel, they've had more than one base runner on at a time. But they got two on there now. And she's going to put on the the mitt. That was a rocket shot. That wasn't was it? a rocket shot. She's got so much pop on her bat. Kegel had no time to react whatsoever, who normally defends her position very, very yeah, well. She does. But I mean, you just didn't have it. She didn't have any time to react to that ball. Taylor's just been such a great leader, too. She's a quiet leader, but she does it with her actions. And there's a pitch right down the heart of the plate to Chung. Chung does have a home run yep. this weekend. Not versus Kegel. Kegel has only given up one home run all season. Well, you said she had a home run. It was yesterday. Want to take a look at it? Here it is. Just gets up there swinging. Gets the equalizer in the first of a, the doubleheader yesterday. Little ice coming here. <laughs> oh, that's the fun stuff you see and the ACC. Of course, we talked about What's up for Clemson next? Louisville will be hosting Virginia Tech. As you see, Funky, the pinch runner at first. So Louisville and Va Tech, the 26th to the 28th, here at Omer Stadium and Don Dabena Field. That's the first out, and the ball goes away. Should be an opportunity for Louisville maybe to get a run, and indeed they do. And that is why Celine Funky went in there to run for Taylor Roby. She's not in the batting lineup, but she has wheels. So it's a two to one game, and that's an all important first run for her too. Not only as a hitter. Here, take a look at this replay again. Yeah, Chung just hits a choppy ball to Logaleo who then commits the throwing error over to Matamore, goes sailing over Matamore's head. Funky rounds third with her speed, able to get home and advancing Chung to second base. I would bet Coach John Rittman right now is going over to her and say, listen, do you know who you got in the circle? You don't need to throw the ball away. Yeah, and that extra throw, and that's going to be the error that costs the ending. Well, she had the double play. Right. That's true. She had the double play, so I, I don't really fault her in going for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them is considered an error. So each team now has com committed a boo-boo. How about Suzanne's plans for the Louisville Cardinals? All right, well, so far they're doing a much better job of not leaving their wingman out on base. Coming into this game, they had 23 players left as base runners in those three games. And smart base running. They've, they've had some issues with getting called out in areas where they shouldn't have. They've got a lot of speed on the base path, but they need to use their heads and be smart about when they're advancing the bag. And there was an example, really first time in the series, where they were smart in their base running. Good point. And that's an important part of that run that scored and potentially another run at second. This is hit foul. Coach Holly April in her third season, but a veteran coach in the ACC Coach of the Year after 10 successful seasons at Pitt before she came to Cardinal Country, ACC Coach of the Year in 2018 and took the cards in her first year before last year, of course, with the COVID situation to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, she's been an exceptional helm in addition to this Louisville staff. Attitude and effort, and mm -hmm. boy, does she embody that. Those are the two words that this team strives to give every single day is attitude and effort. That's what she wants to see out of her players, and that's what she gives to them. And boy, she's as good as they get, too. She teaches the game well. She interacts with the players well. They respect her teaching. It's a great hire. Swing and a miss to strike out by Cagle, but Louisville scores its first run against the all ACC performer, and it's two to one at the end of one. Hey, the folks are back out in the berm in a two to one game at the end of one, and 
beautiful day to wrap up this series as, yes, we are pet friendly here at Almer exactly. Stadium and Don Dabina Field. And a lot of Cardinal alumni have been around through the years and they love to come back and watch. And tell me that dog's not happy on spring. Get a little wah wah out here. Oh Aww, my God, it doesn't get any that. better than that. Sweet water puppy. How about that? And coming to the plate, <laughs> pretty big play yesterday. See Aliyah Logalello hitting that ball over the left field line, getting herself a home run. Here's a swing on the first pitch. That's popped up, and that's taken care of. That's that couple of pitch or less performance there by Roby to get a hitter. Taylor's just been a complete teammate, does everything right that she needs to do. And again, this is something I think anybody that sees Clemson this year, Suzanne, they swing at a lot of first pitches. Do you notice that? They do. That? They come up. They want to be the aggressor. You're they right. want to hit the ball. They don't want to go up and walk. They've yeah. got too much pop in their bats to take the free pass. They want to get up there and hit the ball. And that sends a message to the pitcher, too. Hey, you you throw something at me you think you're going to slide by. I'm going to see as every pitch is, might be the best pitch that I want. I'm not scared of you. That's right. It's the best way to say it. And this team has shown that. And really a good sign by the Cardinals coming back with a run in the bottom of the inning and a good pitch there that makes that one right off the fist yeah. for Hyatt. She had no chance for that ball to get very far. And... That's the second out in the inning for Roby. Yeah, Roby curves that ball. She's got a screw, wicked screwball. Sends that on the inside corner, just jamming Hyatt. Call that handcuffed, I think. I like it. I think he, she was in that chance. Couldn't get it all the way out. And just rolled it down, and the Cardinals handled it defensively. You know, Roby has been so effective. You you look at her strikeouts and, and walks over this weekend. Again, she's had 14 innings of work. They don't do it. They don't do her body of work justice. But when you look at how many times she's forced this Clemson offense to fly out or ground out, they've, she's uh, had 17 fly outs, 19 ground outs coming into today's game. I mean, she's been <laughs> exceptional and very effective versus, again, a very potent offense. Yep, and when you get a team like Clemson to hit a lot of ground balls, that's what you want them to do. Keep it in play and not keep it in the air where about half the roster has a chance to hit it out. Great point. Well, and she's got a fierce defense behind her, too, <laughs> yeah, making does. exceptional plays. So that just, her up too. Ooh, just did miss. That was a tough pitch to take there. I don't know that I could have done that, but you could see Roby thought she had just got that corner. But a good eye, and now it's two and two. Check swing. She definitely didn't go, and I think Roby came with a little extra there and got it up high because she really thought she had the punch out. So now it's a payoff pitch. Popped out of play. You know what? They hit a lot of foul balls, too. Just like we said, they came up there to the plate. Now, that's what Louisville's been able to do, too, here today, early, just making making contact, as you said. Putting it in play is so important in this sport. When you have dominated pitching. Little looper and caught at second base. Nice play by Newman, and that's an easy inning for Roby. So we'll go to the bottom of the second. Clemson over the Cardinals by one. Seven innings of the weekly softball podcast with all the ESPN personalities that cover the sport. And they'll entertain us all the way to Oklahoma City and beyond. And this week, those are some of the things recapping the weekend. Will the Sooners stay undefeated and lefty love? And maybe a little bit about this series. Listen now on ESPN the app, iTunes, or wherever you listen to your podcast. And I will get you on before the year is over. Give me a chance. All right, bottom of the second inning, a good one going on. 
in the final game of this four game set. And beginning things is Newman. There you see Maddie. One of those super seniors. Maddie has been a very consistent performer her entire career. Has a very good eye at the plate as she gets ahead on the count, two balls and no strikes. There's a good look at her. So Don, Maddie is in fact super, but she is not a super senior. She's not. No. This is her real senior season. Oh, she was okay. a junior last season during these shortened. So she has another one. <laughs> She's super. I like that. Yeah. I needed another year to kick. I'd still be kicking. <laughs> you know what? We could make that happen, Don. Oh, my gosh. We know that really wasn't true because I have one hip replacement and the knee is next, so. But you can only be a senior once. Oh, that's not true anymore. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. It's, Man. it's tough to know oh. who the super seniors are, right. who are the seniors, who are the yes, freshmen, yes. who are the red shirt freshmen, who are the double red shirt freshmen. Right. It's a lot. Well, good job by Cagle to come back. She's now worked it full after falling behind 2-0. Look at that determination from the Virginia freshman and gets her to go after one down in the dirt. So that is Kegel's 79th season strikeout. And, you know, you would think that would put her in the top of the ACC, Don. Um, Do you know what number it's she not. is? Where? She is fourth. Fourth. You see this. Maddie Newman kind of tries and just pokes at that ball, yeah. but so much movement laterally and vertically on Kegel's ball. Fourth. Fourth. So we've got Brittany Pickett from North Carolina. She has, are you ready for this? I'm ready. 120 strikeouts. Wow. Keely Rochard, Virginia Tech, 91. Peyton St. George, who I talked about yesterday right. at Duke, 81. And then Cagle with now 79, including her two from today. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Says well for the league, doesn't it? Speaks yeah. well. And again, on how competitive that ACC tournament will be, this will probably be another year where multiple teams from the ACC, of course, we didn't have the College World Series or the playoffs at all in the NCAA regionals, but hopefully that'll all be back in order. Wolf down a ball, two strikes. And strikeout swinging. Again, we saw that on Friday night. Yeah, and I misspoke. That was actually with Jordan Wolf. That was her fourth on the game. So now she is, in fact, tied with Peyton St. George. All right. In the ACC. And, you know, Don, we, we talked a lot about, you know, a one two punch for pitchers' duos, right? And I have to give a shout out to Duke. Again, 17 game winning streak and they have the double duo of Peyton St. George and Shelby Walters who I also have already talked about with mm -hmm. a 0.5 a 0, I'm sorry 0. 0.56 ERA I'll get the number right one of these times It's a little number that's for sure Right and so they have such an exceptional duo and and my point to this is you know coming into this weekend I, I really questioned whether or not you know who is going to step up into that second spot or third spot and help out Kegel because she takes on the brunt of the pitching innings? But both Millie Thompson and Reagan Spencer are able to throw complete games yesterday. Very impressive. Well, and you know, those pitches, what, 176 pitches after seeing those two pitch probably made her feel a lot better quickly. Yes. Because she knows she's probably expected to carry the load. But as we said yesterday... And that's why now you see multiple pitchers. Because if you can get two or three you can count on, that's a big, big difference, isn't it? Yeah. Especially if they can hit two, like is normally the case. Ooh, that one just did miss. Ornelas held up on it and now run the count full. That's a pretty good look at that one. And for this Louisville lineup, we've actually seen Taryn Weddle come in for Ornelas, usually the first time she's up at bat. 
Ornelas holds down the fort typically at third base defensively, but Weddle normally comes in and pinch hits for her. Right back in the circle, picked up and underhanded. So once again, you can see that Kago can field her position. She throws it, and then she's going to field it and gets the final out of the inning for the Tigers. Well, we have limited capacity for fans with the uh, COVID guidelines, but we have some here, not only up, oh, there's the berm and the folks back out. Oh, another pup up there, got a little company and a couple having uh, a beautiful Sunday afternoon. And of course the phones are always active. What else is new? A little shade. We can smell spring and guess what? It's here today. Beautiful day today. Mm -hmm. Great setting here at Cardinal Park. And the fans up, ah, got a little chip action going on. <laughs> How about a lot of those Cardinal masks though? I love that. Jeremy actually got us one. He gave us something. And guess who the leadoff hitter will be? It is the leadoff hitter for Clemson. Miss Clark, who's already got a triple to add to her. And Charlie Butler, who played well yesterday, now in right field. And the first pitch from Roby is down in the dirt. Well, Clark's had a home run. Now she has a triple. So she just needs a double. I think she has a single too, just to complete the cycle through the, the series. And also a very good eye at the plate, which is probably numero uno one as a hitter. Little chopper going to be tough to get her. Going to be a close play, but they got her. What a great job. No chance at all unless you charge that ball and give Servi a lot of credit there. You can't wait on it, and she went after it and got the tough out there, partner. I'm telling you what, Dawn, that 5-6 duo of Ornelas and Servi on the left-hand side for this Cardinals defense I would pin them against anybody in the country. They are so solid defensively, outstanding. And anytime you can get Clark that starts an inning or starts a game and can get her out, that's a good thing. Yeah. There you see that reference to the third and short stops for the Cardinals. Check swing on a heater and a delayed call strike, as is normally the case with Philip Friels. They all have their own... Styles, and that would be his. 0 for 1 today is Matamore. Hits this one hard and foul just outside the third baseline. Matamore just turning on that ball, smoking it foul, but wow, did that have a lot of power. Mm -hmm. She's knocked in seven this year. Has 10 hits, scored six runs, two doubles. And now she looks at a pitch that evens the count at two and two. You see Taylor Roby all over that inside mm -hmm. side of the plate. I mean, she's moving it up and down, but keeping it on the inside. Pretty good pitch there, fouled away. No opportunity at all at third. As Ornelas comes back. Clemson got two in the top of the first. The cards came back with one in the bottom of that frame. And this one hit in the air, almost misjudged, but played by Greenwood. <laughs> Matamore did a really fantastic job on that changeup delivered from Roby. She just keeps her weight back. Mm -hmm. I mean, drills that ball, but again, really stayed balanced on that changeup, didn't bite. And here comes Cagle for her second trip to the plate. Cagle picked up a single and two RBIs that have given her the lead, obviously when she takes the ball back. Yeah, Kegel really has done it all for this Clemson team. I mean, again, we talked about her outing 
Friday night with her 14 strikeouts. And oh, by the way, she also played left field yesterday. And including her hit today, she has gone seven for 12 on the weekend. That's, that's incredible. And you know, the thing she's done, obviously, growing up that I think she knew would be a big advantage, she's a right-handed pitcher, but notice which side of the plate she bats on. The left-handed side, because she sees more righties. This one hit high in the air and deep down the left field line, and that ball is gone. You can't pitch her <laughs> anywhere. You just almost can't pitch to her. And Cagle gets her own lead now to three and one. That was Cagle's fifth home run on the season. And again, you talked about just her quiet confidence, right? She gets up there, just nonchalantly swings the bat and just hits it in over the fence. Wow. What yeah. a player. You know, you see Gambarda get up to the plate and she hacks. Gambar or uh, Kegel just hits it very calmly, very poised. Well, you know, she's responsible for all three runs too now. Right. <laughs> what else can we add? Wow, if this, if Kegel's not the player of the week, this one popped up in foul ground, and that will end the inning. But one batter late as Kegel gets the long ball to make it Clemson one and Louisville one. Well, we got another puppy in the berm in the park. Need a little shade. Well, Clemson adds a insurance run here early and it comes from Kegel who's the starting pitcher 3-3-1 three, three and one for Clemson Louisville 1-2-1 one, and one. yeah Clemson has already matched the amount of hits that they had against Taylor Roby Friday night we talked about how excited we were about this pitchers duel again mm -hmm. today we're seeing a little more offense today though yeah well we talked before we came on and we were talking through the preparation is you know, both of the coaching staffs have broken down the tape of these games, particularly when it came to facing Roby and Cable. And, you know, they do that. That's part of the technology used now. Here's Jenna Servi made that nice play at short. A 5'3 sophomore, California native. Oh, we'll need some base runners. She tries to bunt her way on, and it's unfortunately going to roll just foul. Had the right idea. Great bunt there mm -hmm. by Servi, just a hair off of it to keep that ball fair. Like the fact that Carmen Greenwood came sprinting out to grab Servi's yeah. bat for her. How's about that? Picked her up. That's a good thing. The 0-2, and the beat goes on. Another strikeout rung up by Cagle. Kegel has officially worked her ERA under one. She is now at .97 with five strikeouts. We're in, we're in the third inning. .97. Hmm. Not 97 point. .97. That is incredible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if she'd be pitching if she was 97 Probably point. Probably not, no. But here's Greenwood. See what she can do against Kegel. And she had one of the hits earlier in her first trip to the plate. That one popped up on the bunt attempt. And now, Cagle quickly ahead, two strikes. As the Cardinals, as usual, need base runners. Long look in by Cagle this time, and good job at the plate. Greenwood not thinking of fishing after that pitch out of the zone. There you see her numbers, 379. Knocked in six, has that one long ball. Yeah, she has been a fantastic table setter. And she tried to bunt there and bunted through it. You're right. You know, I don't think it would be that easy even to put it down against Cagle because her ball moves so much and it gets there and like yesterday. <laughs> before you even think about there you go good eye Yorktown Virginia product five foot nine 
And a little chopper fielded easily and taken care of. So obviously she can field the position as she jumps out of that circle and quickly two down. See a little smile there between <laughs> Logaleo and Cagle. Yeah. She does. She fields her position so well, even being, you know, you have to be super agile and super responsive and, and quick to make those plays when you're a pitcher because you think about you deliver the ball, you're a little off balance, yeah. your momentum's moving forward, and then you have to move laterally. Yeah. And obviously, too, she just took her time, didn't try to throw it hard, just a nice little lob to get the out. Here's Cassidy Greenwood, two out and nobody on here in the bottom half of the third. She swings and hits it in foul ground and giving chase and running out of room is Hyatt. She gave it a heck of a try. Yeah, you know, as a catcher or as a, side corner player like you know that that padding is there there's mm -hmm. concrete there there's a net there so that's always in the back of your mind when you go after something like that and, and you could see Jojo Hyatt kind of put the brakes on a little bit but she went for it yep just below the knees first pitch out of the zone by Cagle to Cassidy Greenwood big sigh by the right hander Takes a deep breath, checks that sign, and comes plateward now. And that's about the same spot low. Two and two. Well, Suzanne mentioned the fact that the other two starters yesterday played so well. There's another punch out. And we'll continue that when we come back as we've completed three. Clemson leads it over the Cardinals, three to one. Well, partner, I think uh, the softball alumni club is back in force today. Uh, yep, hello, how you all doing? Got a little one out there? Got another pup? Yeah, isn't that neat? Stay a part of the program that way. Willing to come back and support the oh, current team. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, yep. Again, that's what it's all about. I love it. Yep. Top half of the fourth inning, 3-1 Clemson. Trying to complete a four-game sweep in a series. Cardinals trying to capture at least one if possible. And here's Stewart. Yeah, you see Clemson trying to make it Five consecutive yeah. series sweeps. <laughs> so it's almost a habit. That's a good graphic there and good pickup, partner, because that just shows it's consistent. This one hit really hard to third, picked up nicely, and the tag made over at first base by Hurst. Yeah, that was an exceptional heads-up play there by Michaela Hurst. She sees that Ornelas's ball is a little off its mark, able to apply the tag not allowing the base runner. And that ball was stung too. Not an easy play at all. And that's a out to start the inning. And a foul out of play for Pereira, the second baseman. 0 for 1 today, a strikeout victim has 15 hits on the year, six runs batted in. Has struck out only six times all season. Runs up on this one, and now she's in a two-strike hole against Roby. Because if you missed the beginning of the show, Roby was not the losing pitcher in that battle on Friday. And she didn't give up a run. Check of the... The armband and the pitch just on the end of the bat. Servi takes care of it and two quick outs for the right-hander Roby. Again, so solid on defense. And actually, after yesterday's game, Louisville has now taken over as the fielding percentage leader in the ACC. 
fielding 978 to Clemson's 976. Again, both very stingy defenses, but. This one hit high down the left field line in foul territory. Good job by Greenwood over there. And you talk about an easy one, two, three inning. The Cardinals will try to make up the two run deficit. Beautiful shot from right behind home plate at Don DeBena Field at Ulmer Stadium. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning in this ACC softball matchup between number 25 Clemson and the Louisville Cardinals. Along with Suzanne Bush, I'm Don Russell. Great job as always by our ESPN, ACCN crew doing a great job off-site. Three to one Clemson and the Cardinals now. And guess who? Roby's got a chance to help her own cause here beginning the inning. And she had a base hit already and she swings on the first pitch and that is right back in that circle. And as we already made reference to, Cagle will cover that ground for sure. She did it again. Yeah, Cagle winning that battle. Taylor Roby was able to smoke one past Cagle earlier, but yep. Cagle winning that battle. That second time at bat. Just took enough off that pitch where Roby didn't get all of it. And now here's Chung, who reached on a fielder's choice. Swings on the first pitch. Grounder to third. Well, and just like Louisville, Clemson now in the bottom of the inning gets two quick outs. I like the adjustments from the cards, though. They're not allowing mm -hmm. Cagle to get ahead in the count. They're being an aggressive. They're trying to beat Clemson at Clemson's own game, yeah, right? They're, they're right. wanting to jump on the first couple of pitches, do something with those, and get base runners, as opposed to holding back and seeing if they can get a walk or, and Cagle able to then work her magic kind of out, you know, out and around the plate. Mm -hmm. Here's Hurst. That one down around the shoelaces. She's 0 for 1 today. Strikeout victim to Cagle. Long look in. Righty against righty. Little chopper foul. Well, we've certainly been blessed with great weather over this weekend. A few weeks ago, we had ice and snow. And had a ton of rain and Mother Nature really cooperating for this weekend in the series for Clemson and Louisville. Just below the knees, two balls in one strike. There you see right-hander goes to get a little dirt and makes that adjustment. Those masks were added several years ago as a safety measure. This game has gotten so fast. And the hitters hit it so hard as that one is hit hard. Again, though, at third base, a good job defensively. And a 1-2-3 inning for Cagle. After four complete, Clemson leads it 3-1. to one. Back here at the Don Davina Field outside of the fence as the folks enjoying a beautiful Sunday wrap-up series game between number 25 Clemson and the Louisville Cardinals and well, we were talking between the breaks about how good it is to have some of the alumni come back and follow the team and actually it is a pretty nice place to watch the game out there. Beautiful Almer Stadium down to Dabena Field, former good friend of mine that did so much with the local softball program that was the mainstay not just for Louisville but others but a great man that did a lot for softball and a lot of people. Here's Hyatt today, 0 for 1. JoJo has a home run and six driven in on the season. Swings on the first pitch, grounds it to short, and we're in a little groove here. I think that's like six straight ground balls that have been put in play. And, of course, if you're the pitcher, guess what? That means you're doing your job to get them to – hit it on the ground and not in the air. Yeah, as a defender, you want to do anything you can to help protect your pitcher. And again, I can't say this enough, how incredible Servi is 
fielding at shortstop. I mean, she makes it look very effortless, very easy. But I'm telling you what, she is an exceptional, exceptional fielder. She fields that ball so well, just smoothly in motion, makes that throw. That must have oh, looked like she thought she got a piece of her, but that's not the case. Bingham wanted to take first base, said just got a piece of her, but that's not going to be the case. You can see Bingham doesn't, doesn't like that call. Yep. Well, one thing for sure, it's not going to be reversed. <laughs> One one, just off the outside corner. And you know the other thing too, I've mentioned this a lot over the series, but it just sticks in my mind from Holly's first year, the defense has so improved. That was one of the real issues the beginning of the season. And then you had some players leave because of all the other things. You know, transfers and That's got to be a strike and is. Now it's three and two. Well, and Roby, the nice thing about her is, you know, she's the local, so to speak, just right in the area. Another good pitch that's fouled away. Well, and I love that about Coach Holly, right? She wants to keep the best talent yeah. here. Yep. Mount Washington, of course. Recruiting wise, yeah. Bullet East. And that's what you want to do. You're right. That's it's a pretty strong suit. Here's the payoff again. And strike three call. Roby pinned it on the inside corner and gets the K. Yeah, you saw Bigham striking out looking. That was Roby's 14th of the season. Backwards K. And she's really pitched well. Well, of course, they both have, as was the case between those particular pitchers on Friday night. First game of the series, fouled back out of play. Chung got rid of that mask and was looking for it immediately. Oh, little guy got one. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, it is I'll buy it if you let him keep it, but they have to give him back. There so you go. Fun. A lesson learned, right? The one strike pitch, that's there for strike two call. Just look at the pitch count. Only 73 pitches, and we're in the top of the fifth inning. Of course, both of these will not, both of these pitchers will not waste pitches. Of course, Clark started the game with a triple after starting a game yesterday with a home run. And you look what she's been able to do. And the most impressive thing is I think she is. This one fouled back. Yeah, Clark had, a, had two home runs yesterday, yeah. one in each one of the games. She's I, really a true freshman, too. She doesn't have those stars by her. Didn't take her long to get into the lineup. Fooled there, popped it up, giving chase. Good job at first base as Hurst takes care of things. Once again, out in order. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. It remains Clemson by two. I love this. Because of the graphics, there's nothing else. No. How about our game <laughs> recap? We'll have going back. This is how things started, partner. Yeah, Clemson has gotten three hits so far on the day, and you see that throwing error there that allowed Celine Funky to advance home. And in the third inning, of course, uh, we're at a three to one. There's the breakdown of, it's been a good game. And look, look at Clemson. Cagle, pitching. Cagle, two for two, home run. Three RBIs on the day. She, she just, you know, she's like, I got this, guys. And she is the proverbial stat stuffer in this thing for sure. Stat stuffer? Yeah. Okay. She's done that in a big time way. Had to make a whole list of her first. Well, you helped out a lot. I think I missed one or two. Cardinals need a base runner because things are cooking now as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Both. 
pitchers cruising along. Newman's only appearance was a strikeout back in the second. So her batting average finally just dips under the 200 mark. Gets a little piece of that one that stays at the plate. It's gonna be a great race the rest of the year in the ACC. As we mentioned a couple of times, our first ACC action here. This will be the side of the ACC softball championship. And there's another upside down K. Perfect pitch on the outside corner to strike out a Newman. That is her seventh strikeout. Going to get one of the zoom replays here, partner, as it comes plateward. See Kegel's delivery. Oof, right you there. See that just touching the outside part of the plate with that screwball. And Butler will be at the plate. She tries to bunt her way aboard. 21 strikeouts in this series. I'd say that's a good weekend. That's not too bad. What was that number we had yesterday? 21. Remember? Yeah. Comes back to play. The shagging the, stat. That was your shagging stat. That was uh, Gambarda's RBIs yep. coming into the weekend. That's right. Found another use for that number. Checked her swing and takes a strike. And Kegel in full gear <laughs> and full speed after getting the chance not to pitch yesterday. But of course, she was in the lineup as a hitter and has been the top hitter in this series for Clemson. <laughs> Unless somebody did something pretty strong in a series, I think you're looking at the ACC Player of the Week or a co-player of the week at least. It's going to be hard to duplicate the numbers that Cagle has, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, she won that accolade a couple of times last year in 2020 in the condensed COVID season, and she was the only one to, only one in the ACC to do that multiple times. And another strikeout as she throws the heater by Butler. How about some shagging stats on Kegel? Shagging stats. How about that? So her ERA is now not point nine five. She's got 84 strikeouts, and 81 <laughs> innings pitched. I mean, that's insane. It is. That's it. more than one strikeout per inning. And she delivers a strike right down the middle of the plate. She just is so calm and collected. It's just like a walk in the park with her. I mean, she has concentration, very confident. And she gets in that groove. She pretty much has command of things. That one chopped foul. Well, and her strike percentage, Don, you know, in her pitches, she's what got is it? 42 strikes to 24 balls. That's a 63% strike percentage. I know these are a lot of numbers, folks, but they are important and they mean something. Well, and it's fun for us to look at them, right? I think as a player, you yeah. can get inundated and get what you call you know, paralysis by analysis yep. and too many stats all floating in your head. And I think that's when players kind of lose their autonomy, right? They, they get too wrapped up in the numbers. But for you and I, Don, it's fun to look at yeah. and talk about and, you know, jaw-dropping stats. And I think that's selection of her in the preseason and the ACC as an all-first-team selection was a pretty wise choice. Yeah, she's ranked <laughs> number two as a, a freshman in, in, uh, from Softball America. And so she was also a Softball America preseason All-American, Division I second team preseason All-American. I mean, her preseason accolades are pretty ridiculous as well. They're coming to fruition here in the real season. That's for sure. And the beat goes on, another strikeout that that will end the inning. And after five complete, it remains 3-1 Clemson. Welcome back to Don Davina Field and Almer Stadium. There's the line score. Three, three and one, one, two and one. Clemson with the advantage. Well, I have the chance I'd like to wish 
Jeff Walls and the women's basketball team, a lot of luck as they'll play in the NCAA tournament in San Antonio against Maris tomorrow. I uh, had the pleasure of been calling the, some of the women's games the last several years along with Sarah White. They've given us a lot of access. It's been a great year. We had Dana's last game as our last game on the ACC Network Extra, and we want to let folks know watching in Clemson, you're, you're serious about your football. We're serious about our basketball, both men and women, and the women among the best in paid attendance in this country, too. This first pitch has popped up. What a great job by Chung. That is probably as about a hard of a ball as it is to find. As she got rid of the mask, and it was just about straight up in the air. Yeah, and the sun's right straight up in the air, too, but Chung really does a great job with her quick reflexes, ripping the mask off, locating the ball, which is sometimes very difficult when it's sky high <laughs> like that. So great first out there. It was, and that one got away from Roby. Of course, we've seen the sun shining. and Well, Cagle, as she had that punch out to end the inning, that's what she's been able to do with her pitching and her hitting in this series. This, I mean, the stats are just. That's a season you, for some people. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, astounding. Seriously, astounding. So Roby's job is to keep the Tigers at bay and get a couple of more chances at least to make up that two-run deficit. And is indeed the Part two of the uh, pitching duel we saw on Friday. And those two have done both done well to represent their institutions, that's for sure. Again, Roby has done an exceptional job in the circle. We, you know, we've talked a lot about Valerie Cagle, but right. not to diminish Roby's body of work because she has been very good against a tough Clemson offense. You know, only giving up 10 hits, and she is now in, what, 20 innings of work? Mm -hmm. Keiko, a home run, a single, three runs batted in. Need I say more? This one hit high in the air and deep, and she's done it again! Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what can Keiko do more than she's done for the Tigers? Roar here in Louisville. So Unbelievable. Not, Dawn, not only does she have nine strikeouts inside the circle, she has all four RBIs. Here it is. She takes this outside pitch, just steps with it, able to send it over Carmen Greenwood's head. Wow. That's opposite field power. Yeah. Two, by the yeah, way. Yeah, she didn't even pull that. This one, good pitch, popped up. That's the second out in the inning. Again, seems like they get the one pitch outs after a home run. And what a weekend. Of course, Roby, you know, was player of the week back in February, right? So, I mean, February that's, 23rd, that's yep. a great honor, but whew, gonna put a star by this one. Hit hard into left field. That's a solid hit. Picked up by Greenwood. I got to Greenwood in a hurry. Yeah, it did. One hopper. That's the fifth hit. And Cagle now has confidence. In the series, that's, look at that, 642 batting <laughs> average, two home runs, six runs batted in. Do you think she warmed up the bus this morning, maybe? And, Holy cow. Right. Jeez. And 23 strikeouts. And 23 strikeouts. No big deal. Mm. Going to have a runner at first base. It's going to be Arel Oda, who you mentioned at the first game of the series, made a defensive play good enough to make the top 10 in Sports Center. Yeah. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Yep. She was number six on the list. Well, the Tigers and the Dukies are going to have quite a series next weekend, that's for sure. Of course, don't forget the Cardinals will be hosting 
a very fine Virginia Tech team that, by the way, was the last team to beat this team twice. Yeah. February 19th in a doubleheader. Those are two tough home series yep. for the cards. Popped up and foul ground out of play. Of course, Holly will tell you, she knows how tough this league is. She knew it at Pitt. She knows it at Louisville. And she knows it's getting nothing but better. But that's the way she wants it. I mean, she's, she played at the highest level and is coaching there, too. Well, and the majority of their losses for the Cardinals have and, been to ranked yeah, teams. Yeah, that, that's a good point. It has been indeed. Nothing doing here except another run for Clemson. It's 4-1. to one. Well, we talked about the pitching duel. Let's do a little update here, partner. Yeah, Valerie Cagle coming up so far with nine strikeouts. And we are just, we're in the middle of the sixth. I mean, it, it, that's an exceptional day at work. And but, she struck out 14 the other night. Right, in 11 <laughs> innings. But Taylor Roby has also done a good job. However, it has been all Valerie Cagle who has cut two home runs today and allocate all four RBIs to Valerie Cagle. I know I'm just an old stupid kicker, but I'd be pitching around that girl. <laughs> I don't care what you have to do. She has just paid, make you pay the price, not only in the circle, but when you come to the plate. I'm only joking, of course. That's just how solid this Clemson team is. And you mentioned it, it was built up to be the best or one of the best from the beginning and going to be nothing but some great play for the tournament coming here in March, I think it's the 6th through the 9th, right after the Kentucky Derby returns with a few fans at least. There's a butt attempt, punted through it, one and two the count. Louisville has yet to get some offense generated yep. since that very first inning. They are two for 17 mm. against Cagle. Yep. Just protected the plate enough to keep the at bat as Servi. Have to agree with you. She's done a terrific job defensively and handed handled some really tough plays because this team they're facing hits the ball hard more often than not. Just stayed alive again with a piece of the ball. So we're going to step out and try to gather herself. And the Cardinals 0 for 5 as hitters with Two out, Clemson two of their two for eight with two out, of course. And you have Roby and this young lady, Valerie Cagle. Not a lot of pitches out of the zone. <laughs> Serving in, and again, the one-two pitch. Good job getting a piece of it and fouling it off. Nice defensive at bat here for Servi. Just fouling away some pitches that yep. she's not ready to swing away on. So let's try the one two again. Fouled away again. Good at bat. You saw that off speed delivery from mm -hmm. Cagle had a ton of movement on it. <laughs> she did a good job just to get aluminum on it there, didn't she? Yeah. Had a lot of movement. You're right. This one's popped up, might be playable, and just before getting to the backstop area, the catcher over there, Hyatt, couldn't make the play. That ball didn't have much air under it, nor did she have much time to get there. Well, but, and I think JoJo actually had a good jump on the ball. Yeah. Saw it well, but I think seeing the pads and seeing the concrete and seeing the netting, you know, if it's not your home field, you don't really know how far you've got. Strike three, and that's completed with the toss. 
over to first base. No, I think you were right. She, uh, it's like she's got something in her eye now. Carmen Greenwood now. Clemson, they've had three consecutive series sweeps, trying to make it four. Hanging on to a three-run lead here in the bottom half of the sixth. And if she can hang on, it'll take that hitting or game winning streak rather to 17 straight. But as Suzanne mentioned, at least as of today, was one short of Duke. Yep. Who they'll be facing in Clemson next week in a four-game series. So keep your eye on that. Swing and a miss. Greenwood has one of the hits for the Cardinals today. That was back in the first inning. Grounded back to the circle as several Louisville players have done in this contest. Swing and a miss. Two and two. And I think the thing we talked about, Suzanne, is the performance by Cagle that went to a 11 innings, nothing changed for her. <laughs> she didn't throw any more pitches. She didn't seem tired. Well, Louisville again getting some pitches fouled away. Well, and, you know, her teammates yesterday really did, you know, between Reagan Spencer and yep. Millie Thompson did a great job giving Valerie Cagle the day off. Yep. So they that gave her, her an extra day to recover. Whereas this is Roby's third yeah. third day in a row pitching. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Slow roller, glove thrown and not in time. That ball didn't get to second base very quickly. And Perea, by the time she got the throw there, Cardinals able to leg it out. Good job. Carmen Greenwood, super speedy on the base path. It's a choppy ball to Pereira who scoops the ball, tries to make that throw, cross her body, just can't get it there in time. And now we're gonna have a pinch hitter. It'll be number nine, Vanessa Miller. Miller. She had a nice home run yesterday. Yes, she for did. The lone run in the one to six loss. The second game of the doubleheader. That's true. Third game of the series. Well, and that gives her a lofty 833 on base percentage. Oh, OPS. OPS, rather. But you mentioned that home run, and that is their only RBI in the season, but a sure way to get one. 88th pitch delivered by Cagle, and it's down the heart of the plate for a call strike. Down low. If you look at the line score, the only thing that you could say if you're a Tiger fan you're not happy with. Yeah, they only left two on base and they won't commit one error, so that's, of course, maybe below for them, but that's still pretty good. Cardinals need base runners. That's what they need now, down by a four to one count. Well, and Vanessa Miller has some speed as mm -hmm. well, so I know they would love to get both Greenwood and Miller on base, but yeah, that's not going to happen because <laughs> that's another punch out. That is number ten. Yep. Double digits. And here's Roby again. Roby had that single back in the first inning, then grounded back to the circle. Check swing. Pardon? Oh, they checked and said, I guess she didn't go. But as you've mentioned, when you look at situations like Roby and wasted pitches, there's certainly not been any of those for either one of these two, but they've had quite a battle going at the plate. Ooh. Wicked off speed there. It was. 
right at the knees. Yeah, pitcher's duel, hitter's duel. I mean, these two can do it all. Yeah, they can. Long look in. That's a strike on the inside quarter. There's Roby, a redshirt junior. Well, they'll probably do some more battles either later this season. And this hit high in the air. Should be playable. Couldn't see it. Lost it in the sun. And the Cardinals will get a run on the play. That hit high in the air, and Oda just lost it. Yeah, you could tell. And, and Oda is an exceptional outfielder. You actually saw Mattimore look up at the sky trying to figure out where the angle is for the sun, but Oda just misses this ball completely. It's hit way up in the air, and you can see her trying to shield her face. She thinks she has it, and it just goes off the left side of her body. I know she's going to be disappointed in herself for that one. Gets a Cardinal run in to make it four to two. So they got a run there, but it was pretty obvious from the beginning that Oda just could not find the ball and gets to the point she tried to use her glove, as Suzanne said. And here's Rebecca Chung. 0 for 2 today. Fielder's choice and a ground to third. Breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Took a lot off that one. Becca Chung. Becca Chung was one for four when facing Kegel Friday night. She did have three strikeouts. Becca Chung is one of those usually go big or go home hitters. Yeah. She's either hitting for power and hitting the fence or over the fence, or she's going to just hack away and sit down. She fouled that one away. It goes to a ball two strike, and now Kegel will deliver her 100th pitch on this one two offering. Fouled off again. Of course, normally in the ACC, the series have been three games, but with all the COVID thing going on and the schedule issues, decided to play four and are counting them. Ooh, that just did miss. That was a tough one to take by Chung. Evens it at two balls and two strikes. Hear that Cardinal chatter in the dugout. Swing and a miss there. And another unbelievable inning by Kegel. We're going to the top of the seventh Cardinal. Well, welcome back. Yeah, getting a little chilly, might need to coat on. Four to two our scores. We go to the top half of the seventh inning and guess that young lady's had enough without the coat. Been a gorgeous weekend, that's for sure, considering what we've been dealing with. And of course, if you're a Cardinal fan, you may not think that, but I think everybody knew coming into this it would be a good challenge. And you're playing this league, you're playing the best. And it's one of the fastest growing conferences with the addition of teams when the new, quote, ACC, end quote, came together. It was amazing the number of schools that didn't play some of the sports. Now, we just had that ball by Chung thrown back to the pitcher like we saw the other day. I don't know what happened there. Well, she went over to the dugout for a moment, I think, and now she's going to make sure she's right on the signs. That happened, was it yesterday? Day before. What? It's Friday. Yeah. Left the game. Way out in front of that pitch, a foul. We can't diminish the body of work that, again, Taylor Roby has given this Cards yeah. defense. I mean, 
Her strike percentage is almost 70%. <laughs> she has thrown 58 strikes to 26 balls and actually is leading Kegel in the amount of strikes. Yeah. Well, and again, I think the thing, and you know, Roby's a good hitter too. We know that. But yeah. I think the other players that stepped up, and I think the real key point, you mentioned it, and it's an excellent point, with all the pitches thrown on Friday, the way the other two starters came in and just, you know, played lights out. Yeah. Giving they, her that break not to have to throw a pitch, but yet the luxury of having her still in the lineup to bat. This hit high and foul going to be out of play. Golio, 0 for 2, pop out and a foul out. And she hits another one foul way out in front of the Roby pitches. Yeah, Logaleo doing a really good job just pulling those inside balls. Foul staying on top of Roby's timing. That's down low. Roby looking to switch it up there. Yeah. From Nashville, Tennessee. That's about the most northern part of the recruiting part for this Clemson team. As we mentioned, that hotbed area with Georgia, the Carolinas. Normally the ACC down there and a lot of Florida players. Again, another foul. The oddity of it is that you would think Miami would sponsor softball, but they don't. Logaleo continues to <laughs> just turn on those inside pitches. Boy, what a good at bat. That's I a quabbed on. It was Quality a quab. at bat. You saw Logaleo, she comes out with the walk there. Able to foul multiple pitches off. Yeah, <laughs> she's got a big smile on her face. That was nine pitches. Hmm. She fouled five of those off. Yeah. And if, if you're the one throwing the pitches, kind of hacks you off too. <laughs> well, you want to win those battles. Yep, you do. Regardless of which side of the battery you're on, if you're hitting or if you're pitching, you want to win those battles specifically. And we've got Taryn Weddle now at catcher, yep. so. Good pick up there. And there you see Taryn behind the dish after we, I mentioned that one toss back. They just cut away from the camera shot where I saw it hit the ground and start to roll out in the middle toward the circle. Going to have a pinch hitter. It's going to be Sarah Howell, Oxford, Alabama, went to Oxford High School. And she's a freshman, Don. What, what do you know? 19 freshmen this They're, Clemson team has rostered. Some of them are red shirts, right. choosing to continue their freshman year after a condensed season due to the pandemic. But yeah. 19. This is a, I mean, obviously they are an <laughs> exceptional team, but wow, do they have a bright future. Yeah, they do. I call them freshmen, one with a star, one without a star. That's the only differential you can tell. But that means that they were on the club in what was considered last year. Well, you think that bus is going to feel pretty good, that ride about seven to eight, about eight hours. Foul back to the screen. Now Sarah is a true freshman. Yep. There is no asterisk by her name. I like that. Well, you know what they say about freshmen in the old days. Good thing about them, the next year they'll be a sophomore. And if you got 19 of them, you're going to have a big sophomore class. <laughs> and for Clemson, that would be a good thing. 2-2. Two, two. 
This one is popped up and is playable, and that sun has given everybody a little bit of a problem. Butler is familiar with it as a cardinal, of course. She plays in the outfield when she's not batting or in another utility position. Very valuable player. And looks like we may have another pinch hitter here. We saw Morgan Johnson make an appearance her. yesterday as well. Yep, there she is. From Evans, Georgia, six foot one freshman. Has a couple of home runs, eight driven in. And an imposing figure throw goes down to second. So it'll be a stolen base as the shortstop Servi took it, tried to make a sweep tag, but not there in time. Well, and this Clemson team loves to steal bases. And you know, they see, okay, new catcher coming in, probably a little cold in Taryn Weddle. Let's give her, let's give her a run for her money. Yep. And they did. Now they got a runner in scoring position with one out. This one a little looper. Caught. Didn't able to damp it up. No, she dropped the ball. So all hands are safe. Couldn't see it initially. But it was Newman from behind the bag at second. Had it momentarily but couldn't hang on. The senior will want this back. I mean, she makes an exceptional launch. The ball is in her glove, but mm. you can see Maddie Newman already thinking ahead, trying to apply that tag. That's and right. when she does it, she drops the ball. Yep. You can see she's disappointed in that drop because that was an exceptional, exceptional catch. That would have been the easiest double play as far as feet you have to go because she was, you're right, the reason she dropped it, she knew she had to try to make the tag and didn't, didn't hang on quite long enough. But a terrific effort there and just that much from being a really, really great double play. That ball was smacked too. <laughs> and we're gonna have a pitching change. Lynn Hart will come in with a couple of runners on and one out. And we'll take a break. We'll tell you more about her. New pitcher, it's grad transfer, Jennifer Linhart. Of course, we've talked a lot about her. There you see her numbers, partner, and leads the ACC with saves with three. Yeah, Jennifer Linhart, as you said, gradu you know, graduating senior. She's in dental school, or graduate senior, pardon me. 2.79 ERA, 30, almost 33 innings of work. 36 strikeouts. I mean, she has. She transferred from the University of Southern Indiana. Ha, is it peppered all over their record books? Their team undefeated in her final year to win the Division II title, and now playing at the Division I level as a grad student. Has really been more of a role player mm -hmm. for this pitching staff as opposed to a. A starter, you know, Roby and Holloway really have doubled as that one-two punch. But again, it's almost a baseball mentality, yeah. Don. You know, bringing in the closer. Jennifer Lenhart is going to bring the heat. Well, you know the confidence she should have already in experience in a national championship, even at the Division II level. That's outstanding softball scholarship level. And you're right. I think is it all worked out? She's getting a degree, a doctoral degree, obviously, as a dentist and gets to stay kind of at home and play another year. I think it's all worked out well, and she'll be a big factor for this Cardinal team the rest of the season. And But you're right, particularly in that role. Very capable of starting. This one fouled out of play again. See, Mackenzie Clark has such <laughs> fast hands. The way she can whip a bat around is impressive. She really does. And I mean, if she doesn't like a pitch, 
she's going to get rid of it. She's going to foul it off and wait for her pitch. That's why she's so difficult to pitch to. Now that one popped up and should be playable. Servi goes out, can't hang on, but should be able to, well, just had to throw the ball back in, and now we're going to have runners everywhere. There's another out. You'll get that double play to yeah. end the inning. Oh, just, yeah. They touched third. That should be three outs. Everybody looks a little confused. I think they had us confused, too. Well, I'm going to wait and see where they go. I don't <laughs> well, know what else to tell you. They... You're right. <laughs> Let's take a break, partner. You're all over it. Four to two, Clemson. Let's take a look at that last play. It's like, who's, not who's on first, <laughs> who's on third. You see, Servi loses this ball in the sun, but she's able to get the force out. The runners don't advance, and then there's a little pickle here, and they're able to get that double play, applying that tag. That was strange, but effective. And now the Cardinals know what they need to do here in the bottom of the second or bottom of the seventh, rather, they need two to keep this game going. Gagel trying to get another complete game victory. Of course, the other night she won 11 frames. Didn't like it that she started that with a pitch out of the zone. You know, Don, coming in to the bottom of the seventh, Valerie Cagle has 12 strikeouts. Well, there's a good start, a single to center. Go ahead, partner. Well, what I was going to say <laughs> is, so in her 11-inning outing Friday night, she had a personal best of 14 strikeouts in an outing, right? And she's already at 12 in just seven, or six, pardon me. She's yep. only pitched six today. <laughs> yeah, that's, those are the kind of stats you look at and just say, doesn't really matter what she does. She's able to stay in the positive side. There you see Mia Forsyth, pinch runner at first. So it's a four to two game. Got a runner at first. Pitch number 105 for Cagle, and that one's fouled away. I know there is nothing more than, see, than what you know, senior Maddie Newman wants to get it done here. Yep. This is what you are when you're a leadership position. And the chips are down. You try to turn them over. Got a little piece of that one and chopped it foul at the plate. Maddie trying to get as much time as she can before she steps in. And now that she has, Cagle ready with the one, two. That's off the outside corner, evens the count at two and two. She loves that outside mm -hmm. part of the plate when she's pitching to a lefty. Butler scheduled on deck. The 2-2. Two -two. Slow roller toward third, and it rolls foul. Maddie knew she had to mm. hustle. She didn't want to give them any yeah. opportunity. Ground out into a double play if that ball was, in fact, fair. That was another good pitch that Cagle delivered that Newman was able to foul away, even though she was trying to get on board. Now we'll go through the sequence again. Newman 0 for 2. And she has struck out for the third time. Kegel looking to tie her all-time strikeouts with 14. She now sits at 13 after sitting Maddie Newman down. With four more innings. In the, right. <laughs> that's unbelievable. Right. Here's Butler. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. There's a call strike. Up a little bit high. Two balls and one strike to count on Butler. Trying to throw that super change. Butler struck out in her only trip to the plate in this one. Chops it foul. The way Out. Butler approaches the plate, you see her step in the batter's box, and she doesn't really take a commanding presence. It's just kind of leisurely, but she gets in there and hacks away. Yep. Looks at it low, but you know what? She she does, but she looks comfortable doing it, doesn't she? I mean, I think her pace, she seems calm there. I think there's a positive side to that. Now we're going to see something one way or the other on this 3-2 pitch. And Butler takes it, and another punch out. And Cagle has just tied her all-time strikeouts in one game with 14. But again, Dawn, she did 14 strikeouts on Friday night in 11 innings. Right. This is six and two-thirds innings she's pitched today. Here's the zoom of it. You see that just touches the inside piece of the plate. So now the Cardinals have a Nellis to try to keep this thing going. 0 for 2 with a strikeout, as you can see. Louisville has the tying run at the plate. There's a strike call, one and one. That one bounced up there, and that'll advance the runner to second base. So now putting the ball in play, if possible. Yeah, Mia Forsyth been She's been a little quiet over there on first base. She is one for one on stolen bases this season. Yep. Able to advance now into scoring position. You see her there. Kegel's 2-1 pitch. Strike call, same slide across to the inside corner. That's kind of been her bread and butter today, hasn't it? Yeah, that screw ball curving in to the right side of the plate. But again, she's able to work it vertically. So you never know which way it's going to go. It's going back to Kegel. Only appropriate that she should have the ball to get the final out. Five consecutive series sweeps for the Clemson Tigers as they add Louisville to the list in impressive fashion. Kegel with 28 strikeouts this weekend. Oh, and four RBIs. She was the factor today for this Clemson team. No doubt about it. The final score, four to two for Suzanne Bush. I'm Don Russell saying so long. And don't forget, you can watch the entire replay of this game as well as other games on the ESPN networks. Log on to ESPN.com or download the ESPN app. Thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been a presentation of the ACC Network Extra. Thanks to our crew. We'll see you next week when Virginia Tech comes to Omer Stadium.